Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Mm. Here we have Cold Water Crown, a fishing game by Bellwether Games. It's one to four players, 40 to 90 minutes, and about ages 14 and up. In the game, you're basically going to be participating in a fishing tournament. And as many of you may know, I really, really do enjoy fishing. So when I heard about this game, I was very excited to check it out. There's also a campaign on Kickstarter for the Deep Water uh, expansion, which I have not played, so I won't be touching on very much in this expan in this uh, review. But what I will touch on is the base game for Cold Water Crown. So if you haven't heard about this game let's go ahead and get into it it's about fishing you're gonna be choosing a character or a different like little board here that's your little tackle box and then you're gonna go out and try and catch the biggest fish the most types of fish the most fish and all sorts of good stuff down below let me go ahead and show you it Cold Water Crown is a worker placement game, but it is also a puzzling game at heart. Every player is going to get one of these boards here, and what is going to happen is each part of the board is going to have a number, three, four, five, and six. You're going to start by keeping out the white, uh, white little token here, which is this one right here, out of the bag, and make sure to give everybody three from the bag, one at a time, without looking, onto their tackle board, and make sure it also equates the correct number of gems required. So they're basically going to be pulling from this bag here, and setting up a board uh, of each three, four, five, and six different gems. And once they have that acquired, they're going to then go ahead and continue by the rest of the setup of the game. So you're going to add this little guy in once all of these have been uh, positioned for their gems, and this is going to basically allow allow you to, as you discard gems from different locations off your board, you're gonna, whenever you draw this from the bag, you're going to put all those guys back into the bag. So the setup is pretty simple. You're going to have three different areas. You have the rivers, the lakes, and the shore. And each of these areas is going to have fish. There's a stack of fish here, and of course in the back of the fish is the secret hidden weight of the fish. You're going to get to know what type of fish it is over here though. You're going to deal them all out in these four different areas here of each of the separate decks, and then you're going to place these markers here uh, on the one side in the green, red, and yellow areas. Everybody is going to get one of these markers here to start. This is the worker placement aspect of the game. You're also going to have for each of these areas, the person who has the biggest uh, amount of variety of fish, the, the most weight of variety of fish, is going to acquire these at the end of the game. There's five victory points, four, three, and then two for a four-player game, and it'll change depending on the number of players. There's player counts here and in the rule book that specifies otherwise. You're also going to have this mystery weight here where you're going to take these tiles here and shuffle them up, and then you're going to flip over the top one, and whenever a character or player gets a fish of that weight, they're going to take this and get one victory point and they have to show their fish off. Otherwise though they never have to show the weight of their fish unless it specifies here or at the end of the game when one of these goes a new one is going to come up. You're also going to look at these guys over here. So this is whenever somebody collects eight different species of fish they're going to get five points. Whoever does that first and then of course four and then three like any other worker replacement game the person who does it quickest is the person who's going to gain. You've also got the fish over here it says collect uh, 12 fish and this one, whoever does that first is going to get two points and that will signify the last round of the game. Over here, you have a small species challenge. If you can get all three of these types at first, you're going to get the points. And then over here, references to the Master Angler Challenge, which is this deck here. You're going to shuffle this deck and deal out four. And as you see, there's dogfish and crab and char and all kinds of stuff. And as you uh, collect these guys off of your board, these gems will come. And if they do, if you do not have any of these guys or any guys that match the color of the gems, they're going to go into a discard pile. If they do, if you happen to have a card like this one here in front of you, and you go in and you have to discard green, you can put the greens that you discard onto the card as opposed to in the discard pile. When you match all the symbols of the different colors of gems onto the fish, you're going to acquire the fish. And why is that important? Well, because if you can get three of the same type, you're going to gain two victory points. And also, if you gain four different types, you can get two victory points. These guys are also worth victory points at the end of the game, provided you've caught them. Now, basic turn is going to go something like this. These spaces here are going to represent the spaces you can place your little tokens. When you put a token on, that signifies that you're going to be using that color. So this is black, this is yellow, red, blue, green, and purple. So if you put a token on black here, that would signify that you're going to be taking off one black gem off of each side of your board. So on the three, four, six, and five side of the board. And after you do that, so let's go ahead and pick one at random here, or not random, but more important. Like that's a blue one here. And if you can see this board here, I'm just going to bring it over here so you can see it pretty well. It says one, and it's got, you can choose the, it's the blue area. So you take one blue off of each of the areas on your board. There's no blue here, so you wouldn't take it off. And then on your, the next aspect of your turn, it's pretty simple. You'll take off any of these that you want that are on the board, wherever they may be. Whenever you take off one of these pieces, 
surfaces here, it's going to flip over onto the next side. This is a two side. So the one side would flip over. You would use the one's ability, which is one red off of each side of these of the board, and then you'd be discarding them. And then that would be the end of your turn. And players are going to do that. Now, why is that important? Well, as you take off gems, when you take off a gem from a certain location on your board, the last remaining gem, so for instance, if you took this red, if you took this purple one off and it was the last one on, and the four area, which would be over here, you would collect a flounder. If it was the three area and you, you took off this purple, it would be this John Dory. If you took off the greens over here, it would uh, on this area, it would also be the John Dory. So green, purple, the black and the yellow, and the red and the blue. So it's important to recognize what colors are where and how you want to pull them off so you can get certain ones. So if you want a rainbow trap, for instance, and you want the four slot, you have to make sure you get rid of a black or a yellow in the four slot, which means you're not gonna be able to get that rainbow trout right now with how this board is. Well, eventually you're gonna realize that as each player goes and puts on and takes off, that'll end their turn, and everybody's gonna continue doing that, eventually your board is going to empty of gems. Well, how do you get gems back? Well, that's pretty simple. On, after everybody does this and they flip their tokens over, the next, the first player is gonna go again and he's gonna be able to place this down. Now, what does this do? This is a two instead of a one. Well, if he places on any of the pieces of the board, for instance, let's say he places it on the, oh, I don't know, what's a good spot? I guess red would be. He will be able to take off all red on his board. So two represents all for the colors. Now, two and one represent on this board the ability to take master angler challenges as well as the ability to put more uh, gems on your board. So let's say that these gems were all removed and uh, he had a two. He could place this two down and then he could choose in any combination to grab either two cards here to fill two spaces of his board over here or one and one. If he had a one, he would simply place that there. He could choose either one of these cards or he could choose one of these spaces here. So if he had this two like he does, he's going to go ahead and go from the bag and pull uh, gems out to fill up his spaces one two and three and then he's gonna need four more one two three and four after that he'd be done right whenever you pull off a two on a board so for instance if he plays this one here he takes off all the black ones on his board and then he pulls this one off he'd flip this over uh, let's say this guy got this one. Uh, he'd flip this over and it'd be back to being a one. However, he'd use the two ability on the board. So it's whenever you place or take off, that is the number you'll be using, which is gonna reference either all or one or two on this ability chart. And remember these guys here, when you take them off, when you take off gems on your board, for whatever reason, if you have guys here next to you, you can go ahead and uh, put the gems instead of over here onto these guys. And when it fills up, you get to keep the creature. Uh, there is in, in some instances that are important too. So this happens throughout the game. And every time you catch a fish and put it onto your side of the field, you're going to check to see if it is the right weight. So this is a seven. And each of the fish have their own unique weight. So four to eight pounds. This is a 10 to 14. So you know you're not going to get this. Uh, this is three pounds. You know it's if you get a 10 to 14 pound fish, you're not going to get this bonus. But if you look over here, oh, here's a mackerel. It's three to seven pounds. And you can actually collect this one. You can check if it's a six, no good. But if this was a three, you get to take this and the new one would come up and you'd be looking at finding a two pound fish next, right? This happens throughout the game. These happen throughout the game. If you can get a perch, a flounder, and a roach, which are all in these all three areas of the smaller fishes, you're going to get this point. These happen throughout the game too when you collect enough of these guys, or if you collect this three of the same type, and so do these. Eight different species of fish and 12 total. Now what happens at the end of the game, after everybody, after somebody has collected this 12, uh, somebody's collected 12 fish, then the game is going to end and everybody's going to get one more turn. In which case, uh, after that is done, you're going to separate all of these piles on your board. So if he had, let's say he had a perch and a sea trout and a pike and we would do the red area first. He would take all these guys here. Everybody else would take the same ones. If there's any duplicates, he would pick the highest weight of them and then he's going to add up all the points. So if he had a lake trout and then and then one was six and one was five, he'd take the six and remove the five. He'd add up all the weight. Everyone else would too. Whoever has the highest weight would get the five. Second highest is the four and then three and then of course the two, which varies depending on the player count. You would do that for this, for this, and for this. The last thing I didn't talk about, which is this, this is called a tagged fish. This is for the challenge. You're going to take these guys at the beginning of the game. You're going to shuffle them up and then you're going to deal one out. There's five different types, right? And they actually give you a bonus one if you want to put in a black. And at that point, you'll know this is a bonus fish. So for every fish of a different type in, uh, that you have at the end of the game, you're going to get plus one points. You're also going to get plus one points for each of these fish that you have totally caught. You're going to add up all those points and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game, Cold Water Crown, a pretty interesting puzzly slash worker placement game. Okay, so a couple caveats now. One of them being that when you place it on the space with the anchor and you can choose either the challenge or you can choose to refill, you can choose to refill anything. It doesn't matter if it actually has gems on it or not. 
if the six suddenly has one gem, you can choose to fill it back up to five. Why would you do that? I don't know, but you could do it if you wanted to. Another thing to note is on the five and six aspects of the board, the question goes, why would you ever want to refill the five and the six when you can refill the two and the three or the three and the four? That's actually fairly simple because the five, whenever you finish this, take it off. You can get that five area and it's important to have that five area specifically for certain fish that you're looking for, depending on what happens in the game. Not only that though, but there are these tokens here throughout the game you can get. They're basically like angler tokens and they're going to give you special abilities that you can use. There's a line, lure, rod, and a reel, and they're going to let you move around uh, different fish or pull from different air locations, depending on how this works. So it just gives you like bonus instant abilities that can help you throughout the game. Now the six area is interesting because you have the pile of cards that will allow you to replace the fish as you get new fish. You're going to put the fish from this top of the stack onto the area in which you can fish for. But when you pull a six, you can choose either the six area fish, so maybe the sea trout if it's on six, or you can choose the perch, which is on top of the deck. So it gives you a little bit more variety as far as your choice goes. So that is the basic uh, couple aspects of the game. Uh, so the top ones are going to give you special abilities. The bottom ones are easier to pull off and are easily to give you fish. So what do I think of Cold Water Crown? Well, it's excellent. I love fishing games. This one came across really well. I mean, whether or not the theme hit because you're pulling off, I mean, to me, it felt like you're taking out tackle and you're using it to catch the fish. And eventually you're gonna get the right piece of tackle, which is always the last one. And then you're gonna pull up that fish and you're hopefully gonna get the fish you want based on the tackle you're pulling out. So it does work in that aspect. The special angler challenge is gonna be based on the type of tackle you use and whether or not you're actually going for the fish. So that works in theme as well. The component quality is excellent. The game is excellent. We played it live so you can go ahead and see for yourself how much I enjoyed this game. I win and I win. I love it so much. I'm, I'm not a big a fan of the master angler challenge. I like to just try and catch as many fish as possible and catch the right ones based on the, the little puzzling aspect of the game. It, really is a puzzle game along with a small worker placement aspect to it and it has a nice way of reshuffling the different uh, gems back in with the white one when you pull it out. I like that aspect as well. There's some cool little um, tokens here like I was talking about just a second ago that are useful as well as far as giving you some benefits and then of course the tagged fish provides a, a little extra variety to the game even though it really isn't needed. There's enough fish in the game that provides a different variety and even trying to pull that extra one point, these points can be very valuable and win you the game. It's always a pretty close game at the end which makes it really really entertaining and um especially depending on the number of players in the game. I had to play it with two players and three players and four players. I didn't play it the single player variant, so I can't give you my opinion on that, but I've enjoyed it up so far up to all the different player counts. And um, I'm really, really enamored of this game. I'm very, very excited to check out the expansion for the game, Cold Water Crown, and I think it's going to uh, give it even more variety. I wanted to catch sharks and stuff like this in this game, or like bigger deep sea fish. And I kept thinking like, oh, I wish I could have gotten the expansion, but realistically, I hadn't played the game yet, so I want to get the base game. And now that I got this game, I'm like, Ooh, I really, really want to check the expansion out. I might even just back it just because I really, really enjoy the fishing aspect. I'm a big fisher, a fan of fishing, I should say. I like doing lake fishing. I like doing the pier fishing. I'm not very good at catching fish, but I used to do it all the time with my friend Kevin, and I do greatly miss that because it was such a good, relaxing time. This kind of gives me a little bit of nostalgia in that aspect, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think if you like a puzzling aspect of a game, like it's deeply puzzling as far as where you put the gems, or how the gems are put, how you remove them, and not only that, but you're never going to be completely like screwed out in this game. You might not get the exact amount of pull that you want, but you're still going to get the pull that you want, no matter what. If you want to use blue or red, on your turn you'll either they're going to take it off or put it on and maybe it'll be a two maybe it won't but that's going to be up to the other players and how they decide to work the game around the master angler challenge gives a little bit of extra variety for those players who like to try and go for the bigger points that aren't you know being messed with uh, i don't know but all, all the other just excellent i'm really enamored of this game and as you can see i can just prattle on and on with it but definitely check out my live stream if it's something you think you'd be interested in as well as the expansion i don't know much about the expansion so overall though based on this quality of game i'm really really excited to see what that one's about cold water crown by bellwether games they also did mars open good good games i'm very very excited to see what they come out with next